Boys and girls, do you remember what it means to infer? Inferencing is a reading strategy we use when we take the clues that the author gives us, combine them with our thoughts, and finally make a conclusion about what is happening in the story based on the combination of those two things. Today we are going to read a wordless picture book and that means that there are no words in it. Do you think it is possible to infer using a story that has no words? The answer is yes. We can infer using a wordless picture book by using the pictures and illustrations in it. The story we are going to read today is called Frog, Where Are You? The author and illustrator of this book is Mercer Mayer, and although this specific book did not win any awards, Mayer himself has won many Best Book Awards. He is known for his well-drawn illustrations. I am going to read this book to you, stopping along the way to model how I infer what is happening in the story. In order to do this, I will use only the pictures. We know that this book is called Frog Where Are You? By combining that knowledge and looking at the cover picture, what do you think the story will be about? What do you think will happen? The boy looks like he is looking for something. Could it maybe be a frog? Let's start reading. There once was a boy who had a dog and a pet frog. He kept the frog in a large jar in his bedroom. One night, while he and his dog were sleeping, the frog climbed out of the jar. Here I can infer that the jar lid was not placed on top of the jar before the boy went to bed because here we can see that the frog's leg is coming out of the jar. From this, we can also infer that the frog is escaping from the jar. After escaping from the jar, the frog jumped out of an open window. When the boy and the dog wake up the next morning, they see that the jar is empty. Here I can infer that when the boy wakes up in the morning, he realizes that the frog is missing. He is worried, so he is going to try and find his dog. I know this because the boy is looking at the empty drawer from his bed, and he has a worried look on his face. The boy looked everywhere for the frog. The dog looked for the frog too. When the dog tried to look in the jar, he got his head stuck. Here we can stop and make a personal connection. Now that we know the boy has lost his frog, let's think about our own lives. Have you ever lost anything before? How did you feel when you lost it? Did you try to look for it? The boy called out the open window. Frog, where are you? The dog leaned out the window with the jar still stuck on his head. The jar was so heavy that the dog fell out the window head first. The boy picked up the dog to make sure he was okay. The dog wasn't hurt, but the jar was smashed. The boy and the dog looked outside for the frog. The boy called for the frog. I am able to infer that the boy is trying to yell out so that the frog can hear him. I know this because the boy is outside with his hands raised to his mouth in the picture. He called down a hole in the ground while the dog barked at some bees in a beehive. A gopher popped out of the hole and bit the boy right on his nose. I can infer that the boy got bit on the nose by the gopher because the boy is holding his nose near the animal's hole. Meanwhile, the dog was still bothering the bees, jumping up on the tree and barking at them. The beehive fell down and all the bees flew out. Let's take a moment to pause and make a prediction here. On this page, we can see that the beehive has fallen out of the tree and that the dog was touching the tree. What do you think might happen next? Here, I can infer that the dog was playing with the tree and he is the one that knocked the beehive on the ground. Since the bees are moving toward the dog, I can also infer that the bees are mad at the dog and will probably chase him. The boy wasn't paying any attention to the dog. He had noticed a large hole in the tree, so he climbed up the tree and called down the hole. All of a sudden, an owl swooped out of the hole and knocked the boy to the ground. The dog ran past the boy as fast as he could because the bees were chasing him. The owl chased the boy all the way up to a large rock. The boy climbed up on the rock and called again for his frog. He held onto some branches so he wouldn't fall. Here the boy says, Oh Mr. Frog, where are you? I can infer this because the boy has his hands to his mouth. But guess what? The branches weren't really branches. They were deer antlers. The deer picked up the boy on his head. The deer started running with the boy still on his head. The dog ran along too. 
They were getting close to a cliff. The deer stopped suddenly and the boy and the dog fell over the edge of the cliff. I can infer that the deer stops at the edge so that he can purposefully throw the boy off into the water below. I know this because the deer knows to stop at the edge. There was a pond below the cliff. They landed with a splash right on top of one another. Then they heard a familiar sound. As they moved closer to the sound, the boy reminded the dog to stay quiet. As they looked over the log, they realized that they had found the boy's pet frog. He had a mother frog with him. They also had some baby frogs and one of them jumped toward the boy. I can infer that the boy and the dog are happy that they found their frog because they have a smile on their face. The baby frog liked the boy and wanted to be his new pet. The boy and the dog were happy to have a new pet frog to take home. As they walked away, the boy waved and said goodbye to his old frog and his family. We can infer that the boy, the dog, and the frog are headed back home because they are turned and walking back the other way, back through the pond. Wow, that was a great book! Now let's do a quick fun activity. I will be back in just a moment. Welcome back! The first thing that we are going to do is write the title of the book on the top of our paper, like this. Now that we have that done, we are going to think about our book and all the different places the boy and the dog looked for the frog. Doing this will help us recall the order of events in the story. I will show you an example to get you started. I remember that in the beginning of the book, the frog escaped from the bedroom. So when the boy woke up, the first place he looked for the frog was around his bedroom. I am going to make a bullet point and write down bedroom on my piece of paper. As you can see, I have started the list. Now, your job is to think back through the story and come up with at least two other locations where the boy and the dog looked for the frog. I want you to recall the adventure that the boy and the dog went on to find the frog and what happened to them along the way. This will help you recall the locations they were at. Once you have come up with two more locations, you will have successfully completed this activity. Please do not use the same location that I came up with. Try to think of two different ones. Good luck!